All right, this is chapter two, section one, graphs of functions. Fortunately, we just went through all the graphs, the basic graphs. So now if I give you an equation, hopefully you'll be able to have an idea of what it looks like. And that's what this, this chapter is gonna be mostly about. First thing we talk about is increasing and decreasing functions. Well, first off, what defines a function? How do we know it's a function? It looks like this, but we know it's a function if it is one to one. Remember when we talked about relations and correspondence? That's what a function is all about. For each value of x, there's going to be one value of y. That's a function. That's why a vertical line is not a function. A circle is not a function. So that's when we talk about functions, that's what we're talking about. Increasing. Oops. Increasing. How do we know a function is increasing? Here's the, here's the definition for it. As x1 is less than x2, f of x1 is less than f of x2. Let's see how this makes sense. We have a graph. Let's say this is x1 and this is x2. Is x1 less than x2? Why? No, x1 is to the left of x2. Because that means if I put them both over here, neither one's less than. The way you know something's less than is to the left of another number. Any number to the left is smaller than the number to the right. So x1 is less than x2. This is f of x1 is lower than f of x2. So therefore, this function is increasing. So we can do it this way. If it's increasing, then the slope has to be positive. Remember, the slope is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, or f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1. If it's increasing, you have a positive slope. It looks like that. If it's decreasing, As x1 is less than x2, then f of x1 is greater than f of x2. Here's x1, here's x2. So f of x1 
this is f of x1, it's higher. How do we know f of x1 is greater than f of x2? Because it's higher. Whatever is further to the right is larger. Whatever higher is up higher is greater. So if x, f of x1 is greater than f of x2, that means we have a negative slope. If it's constant, as x, f of x1 is less than f of x2, then f of x1 equals f of x2. This is f of x1, this is f of x2. They're both equal, so it's a constant which means the slope is zero. So just by looking at two points, you can tell me if the function is increasing or decreasing or constant. All right, let's look at example one. We have this graph. All right. Where is the function increasing? Where? Is that it? Whenever you look at increasing, decreasing, or constant, we're always looking for the values of x. What part of the domain is it increasing? Just three? Nope. Look at your pen. This graph uh, here, is it going up or down? Down. Because even though it's pointed up, look at the graph. Is, is it going up or down on my pen? It's down, so it's decreasing. What's this doing? It's staying constant. Now what is it doing? Now it's going up, and now it's going down. So where is it increasing? From three to five. It's increasing from three to five. We'll never have brackets. It's always going to be parentheses. Where is it decreasing?
We don't deal with the y-axis. We just deal with the x-values. Where is the function decreasing? Nope. Here's my pen again. What's the graph doing? Is it increasing or decreasing or constant? Decreasing. So since this is going infinitely, it starts at negative infinity and it's decreasing until where? Until negative one. And then it's constant, it's increasing. Now what is it doing? Is decreasing again. So from where? From five to positive infinity. This is not going up. It's actually going down because we're reading left to right. It's going down from there. And it's going down from here. So where is it constant? from negative one to positive three. There. Example two. Here's the function we'll be dealing with. 0 0.1 x to the cubed minus 0 0.6 x squared 0.1x plus 2. By looking at these equations, you can tell me what it's going to look like. Look at the largest exponent. What does that tell us? It's 3. So what does our, our function or graph looks like if it has a 3 as a degree? Okay. Looks like this. It's a cube, yeah. It's a cubic function, so it goes up. You're looking, you're thinking about the cube root, which is that way. The cubic function goes straight up and down. So our graph, if we look at the graph, So here's, this is the graph of the function. We know the shape of the graph because it's a cubic function. Both ends have to point different directions. And since the leading, the number in front of it is positive, we know it goes up to the right this way. We also know that it crosses the y-axis at two because that's our constant value. Where is it increasing? Decreasing constant. You have to be louder. Be sure of your answer. Nope. To where? Hey, you're close. Only look at the x values. Where does it stop going up? Is the graph still keeps on going up here. What's the x value? So it's increasing from negative infinity to zero. And where else is it increasing? This is Again, look at your pen. Where is the graph going up? It starts at four and it goes to where? Mm -hmm. Right. Let me give you a heads up. It's only going to get more difficult than this.
and don't shrug your shoulders when I got it wrong. Because I could, to me, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to grade it. It's, it's going to be in the testing center. I don't want you guys to finish this course and not know a thing and say, oh, I took Professor Magala's course. He he just puts out idiots. If, you, if my students cannot answer these questions, then I'm going to take away all privileges and make it only one test, one shot at the testing center. Where is it decreasing? From zero to four. Yeah, start is the highest point is here. So it goes from here to here, from zero to four. If you notice between the increasing and decreasing, these are the same, these are the same. So it's increasing, decreasing, increasing. And it's not constant anywhere. Example three, two nurses, Chiara and Mateos, drive away from a hospital at right angles to each other. At right angles to each other. So the Diva Hospital, what does right angle mean? 90 degrees. So we have two people going away at the same time. Chiara's speed, is 35 miles per hour. Mateus is 40 miles per hour. Express the distance between the cars as a function of D. So distance as a distance with respect to time. Find the domain of the function. So how are we gonna figure this out? What we're looking for is what is the distance from between these cars? No. It would be 75 if I take this and that. Does that look familiar? Did we do this before? Exactly, yes. So we have A squared, B squared, C squared. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So this is just the speed. How long is this? So what's the distance of this travel? The distance that Kiara traveled is 35 times the time she traveled. The distance Mateus drive was 40 times the time he traveled. And C is D T squared. So that's 35 T squared plus 40 T squared which equals the distance. If I square root both sides I have 35t squared plus 40t squared I could leave it as that but I could simplify it further if I distribute that square to both of those, I have 35 squared t squared 
40 squared t squared they both have a t squared so i can take it out I have t squared times 35 squared plus 40 squared. The square root of something squared is just t. And there's my fun. This, this will give me a, the distance. This will give me the distance where they are at any time. I'd plug that in the calculator and get that number. Example four, the area of an office space. So what this one's saying is this. A community college has 30 feet of dividers to set off a rectangular area for a student testing center. If a corner of the math lab is used for the testing center, the partition needs only two sides to form a rectangle. So here we have a corner. We have this partition. That will look something like this. We have this side, we call it X, and this side, call it Y. We know that X plus Y has to equal 30 feet, because that's all the divider we have. So ex express the floor area of the office space as a function of the partition length. How do we do that? Well, we have to get, we have one equation with two variables. We have to get one of these variables. We only have one variable. So for example, what is the, we start to solve for Y. If we solve for Y, what does this give us? Minus X. So this is 30 minus X. We're looking for express the floor area. Area, what's the formula for area? Yeah, length times width. In our case, it's X times Y. But now we have it so that it's both X, Y is 30 minus X. So this area is now a function of only x. Multiply those, we got 30x minus x squared. So this is a, this is the area function. B, express the domain of the function using the graph below to determine dimensions and maximum size.
because it's an x squared, so it's parabola. It's negative, so it points down. And we'll learn that the x-intercepts, if x is 0, y is 0. That's intercept. And then the other one, if it's 30, 30 times 30, the same thing as 30 times 30. So B, find the domain of the function. The domain of the function is between 0 and 30. Which is ri ridiculous because if we just had, if one side was 30, the other side wouldn't exist. So it'd be a straight line. So it's somewhere between there. Now, looking at our graph, we know the midpoint of this is 15. If we plug in 15 into our function, that'll give us our height, which is 225. This is the area. This is the x length. So to answer the question, it's saying, using the graph below, determine the dimensions that maximize the area. This is the area curve. The highest area is at 225. That exists when both sides are 15 feet long. When 15 times 15 is 225, that's the highest. So that's the optimal size. Yeah, so using the graph, we didn't have to do all that stuff. Just look at the graph. If it's saying what's the maximum, the optimal, look for the highest point. This is the X, that 15, it'll give us 225 square feet. The last three questions deal with something called a piecewise defined function. A piecewise defined function is just that. It's a function made up into different pieces. For example, this is the function f of x equals a when x is less than negative 2. f of x equals b when x is well greater than negative 2 or equal to, but less than 5. It's for this for example. And then it equals c when x is greater than or equal to 5. This is an example. Notice how all the x's are connected. This is x is less than 2, negative 2. So it goes from negative infinity all the way up to negative 2. This one, but you cannot use negative 2 since it's not equal to. This next one in the middle starts off at negative 2 and goes all the way to 5. But I can't use 5. And the last one starts off at 5 and goes to infinity. You see, all the x's are allocated there. Okay, so the first one, here's an example. When x is less than negative 2, it's 5 between negative 2 and 3, and x squared when x is bigger than 3. 
first thing, check the x's. It goes from negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 3, and 3 to positive. So it's checked. We have to answer these five questions or six questions. So for the first one, I'm using this as my thing. So what is this one looking for? What X am I doing? Negative five. Does it satisfy this one, this one, or this one? First, top, middle, or bottom? X is negative five. Yeah, this is for any X less than negative two. Negative 5 is less than negative 2, so I use this equation. So it's negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4. How about negative 3? Yeah, because negative 3 is less than negative 2, so I use the same equation. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. When x is zero, yeah, zero is between negative two and three, so I use this one, so it's five. When x is three, yeah, because this one says x is less than equal to three, it's five also. So anything greater than three, we use this equation. So if it's four f of four, I plug it in there, it becomes what? Um, four three. Which is? Four Six. times four is 16, right. And 10? Right. So that's how you interpret these. You just have to match where the X's are within there. The last two will deal with graphing. One third X plus three for X is less than three negative x for x is greater than equal to 3. All right, so this is for all x's less than three. So the, when we begin this, let's first start off at this point. Because it's a strict, whatever we get, we'll put a circle as that, an open circle. So if x is three, we get one third times three plus three. The threes cancel, so it equals four. So when x is 3, y is 4. So we put an open circle there. Because I cannot use that 3. Is it what, what kind of graph is this? Is it a quadratic, linear, cubic, what? Look at the x. Are there any special any any operations on there? No, so it's linear. So we need, we have one point here, we just need one more. 
Since it's linear, I want everything less than this. The easiest one I can pick is zero. If x is zero, it's just three. So there's the graph. And for anything three and greater than three, I use this equation. So when x is three, when x is positive three, it equals negative three. When x is three, I get negative three. When x is four, I get negative four. It's a linear equation. So here's my graph. You just have to draw both of those graphs separately on the same graph. So I draw this one only up to three. And at three, I put, a, I put an open circle. And then I draw this one starting at three. Since I know both of these are linear equations, I can just find two dots, connect them, and then go on forever. Example seven. And this is the last one. So the first one, when x is less than or equal to zero, between zero and two, and when x is bigger than two. So for the first set, all my x is less than or equal to zero. So I start off at the end point at zero. When x is zero, what's y? These are my x's, these are my y's. When x is zero, y is four. Now I go less than. When x is negative one, y is four. When x is negative two, so it's a horizontal line. It's a constant line going that way. And it's a solid dot because it's equal. All right, the next equation, I'm going between zero and two. I use this equation. When x is zero, I get four. It's already a dot there. When x is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3. When x is 2, 4 minus 4 is 0. And since it's an equal, I put a solid dot here. Notice, it's a curve. How do I know it's a curve? It's like x squared. Right. And because this is negative, x squared looks like this. Negative x squared look like this. Oops. x squared look like that. Negative x squared point down. And then the last one. I use all my x's greater than 2. So I start off with 2. Plug it in there. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. I'll put an open or closed circle here. Open, because it's not included. Then I put 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. It's a linear equation, so it looks like that. So it helps if you know what the graph looks like. I know this one's a linear. I know this is a constant. 
I know this is quadratic. It's pointing down. So I know what the basic shape is going to be. What do y'all think? I see a bunch of blank stares out there. <laughs> All right, we'll stop there. This And this is where we start doing fun stuff with math. Because, I mean, now we start actually applying the stuff. Next, we're going to look at the algebra of functions. We're starting to see how functions behave. Yes? Oh, if, if, yeah, if you start participating and getting right answer, yes. Right now, when I look out there, it's, it's like waiting for Christmas to come. I, no, I, let me be wrong. I appreciate you guys because you guys are here. Whether you have to be here or you want to be here, either way, you're here. So that in itself is good. But I just need more participation. Just Even if you get it wrong, a wrong answer is better than if everybody gets the right answers. If you get, everybody gets the right answer, then you know it. Let's move on. If you get a wrong answer, then we can explain, now, why did you get it wrong? So don't be afraid to speak out. But we'll call it a day there. Oh,